Hello everybody, welcome back to ch part three of chapter nine in our discovery of thermochemistry. And we're going to continue looking at equations that relate um, different things to temperature change. Um, in this one we're going to look at heat flow. So we've talked about the theory behind this and what's going on and I introduced you to my little box okay that I talk about okay and so um, now we're gonna work some problems so and and I still draw the box okay if, if you, you can do them without that that's fine but I really suggest that because you visualize what's actually going on in the system and it makes more sense to me as to what is going in and what's going out and what the the final energy level is. All right, so if 1200 joules of energy are added to a system, all right, so I'm going to draw my system right here. So this is my system inside the box and I'm adding 1200 joules. And it does 800 joules of work on the surroundings. So if I do work the system does work on the surroundings. That means that I'm going to use those 800 joules to do something. So I'm, I'm going to use those up, and so that's a withdrawal from my system. And so it wants to know, number one, what is the energy change of the system? All right, well, I brought in 1,200 joules. And I withdrew... 800 joules okay and you can say plus a negative 800 joules if you want same thing all right and so that's going to give me and i'm looking at delta e right a delta e of positive 400 joules so whatever i had to begin with i now have 400 more joules than i started with does that make sense so that's pretty simple if you think about it, and words like added, absorbed, those are things that are coming into the system, does work on, um, emits, um, those, those are things that are leaving the system, okay? So if the, if 1200 joules are added to the system in energy state E1, okay, and the system does 800 joules of work on the surroundings, what is the energy change of the surroundings? Okay, well, you can do that whole calculation again, but what we know is that if I ended up, which I just calculated, with 400 joules excess inside the system, that means where did it come from? It came from the surroundings, so the surroundings had to decrease that much to give me those 400 joules. So I know automatically that the change in the surroundings is going to be equal to a negative 400 joules because it has to be equal in magnitude but opposite in sign because I went up in the system so I went down in the surroundings. So energy is exchanged between system and the surroundings through heat and work. So we've been talking about joules, okay, which, which is work. And then we can also use Q, which is heat, um, which um, we can al also um, use joules to manipulate those as well. So the change in energy is equal to the Q, the thermal energy, and the work okay and so those are exchanging back and forth and so that's why we work on the net difference like we did in that little exchange problem i showed you earlier so if you <clears throat> gain thermal energy you're adding that to the system if you do work on the system you're adding work and so if the change in the internal energy flows into the system that is adding it inside so you go up okay and then the same thing if you lose internal energy it leaves the system if it's work done by the system or on the surroundings that 
decreases what's in the system. So energy flows out of the system. So we're going to be exchanging energy and heat, and we could be doing both or we could be doing just one. So that's why we have to look at the overall delta E. Remember, this is a state function, right? Okay, so let's look at a wordy problem <laughs> um, that will give us an example of this. Lots of words in this. What we're going to do is we're going to take inventory. We're going to pull all our stuff out of this, things that we need, right? And so <clears throat> all of this, excuse me, all of this about this potato cannon, and it is pretty cool if you, that you could, you can um, put, look it up on YouTube. It's kind of cool. Um, the potato shoots out of the cannon, and sometimes it flies hundreds of feet, and the cannon emits heat to the surroundings, okay? The cannon emits heat to the surroundings, Hmm. If the burning of the fuel performs 855 joules of work on the potato and produces 1422 joules of heat, what is the delta E? Okay, so I have 855 joules and that's on the potato. And I produce 1422 joules of heat and I produce that those joules of heat where to the surroundings right because it says it emits heat to the surroundings all right so I know my heat is leaving so my delta E and so what we're looking at this, okay, so this is Q and this is, um, I mean, sorry, this is W and this is Q. So we're doing Q work and heat. So if I perform 855 joules of work on the potato, then I use that much, right? And I am emitting heat, which means I'm also losing that. So that's a negative 1422 joules. So Q, sorry, W plus Q, they're both negative. So that means that they're going to be added together and I'm going to come up with a negative 2277 joules. So you have to interpret what it's saying. Burning of the fuel provides work inside the system. So you t you, you're removing that much, okay, because you got fuel in there. It's doing the work. And then you've produced that heat. So that's why they're both negative. Then you have a for practice, okay. And this one is going to be somewhat similar, uh, but it's a cylinder and a piston. And so you need to sit and think about the problem before you start working it to say, okay, what is happening inside that system? And is something leaving? Is something being absorbed or coming in? Just exactly what is going on. And then that way you'll get your signs right. So this is the one you practice. All right. And so that will be it. Uh, for this section and where we first learn how to work these problems.